okay. We're streaming here shortly. Wipe the shine off your forehead if you need. If you need. <laughs> the don't wipe the Shekinah off. Keep any gold dust. Boom, there we are. Well, welcome to the Prophetic Boot Camp. Do your karate stance. Let's go. It's on. All right. Well, <clears throat> so with our new format, what we're doing is every month where the first uh, is going to be a little teaching heavy. So I only go like 30 minutes. I won't go forever. But just to set the tone for the month. Uh, and then obviously this month we'll be doing prophetic kind of groundwork. And uh, every month we'll have a theme just so it's something easy to track and easy to follow along with. And uh, that you would, you know, we want to help you grow consistently and uh, have it be have it be an easy on ramp for everybody. Um, so we're going to talk about prophecy and why you can have faith for it, which is important. And I apologize. I, my kids probably brought something home and I have a tickle in my throat. So if I have to pause and cough, forgive me. Pray for my tickle in Jesus name. Get out of Satan. <laughs> All right. So with anything, gifts of the Holy Spirit, healing, any of that stuff. You want to have, you, you want to see it in the Bible first, right? To be consistent in anything, it's really important that you identify it as the will of God for you in the Bible. Otherwise, things are going to just happen to you randomly, and it won't be something that you can do consistently. So you want to find it and have faith for it. So with healing, if you want to be consistent in praying for the sick, before you're even anointed for healing, or even before you have a gift of healing, should see it in the Bible first, right? So Isaiah 53, 4 through 6, that by his stripes were healed. You want to see it in the life of Jesus, seeing that he healed all that came to him, Matthew 8, 16, and 17. And you just identify that, whoa, Jesus healed everybody. Hmm. It's in the Bible that at the cross he dealt with my sickness. And then now you have a biblical place to put your faith. So in the same way that you'd have faith for healing, you can have faith for prophecy. And that's why... That's why, well, not only is prophecy easier for being online, is like healing is fine, but the prophetic demo is more easily demonstrated online. So you want to have faith that you can do this stuff. And then <clears throat> the higher, you know, faith expectation you have, the more detail, the more accurate you're going to be. But, you know, before you ever have a, a grace or anointing for something, it's good just to really see it in scripture, because then you're going to be able to really grow it and manage it, manage on all of it, right? Steward it in the right way, stewarding it. So <clears throat> for me, the most, for me, I mean, it's pretty easy to prove prophecies for everybody. It's pretty clear in, in the Bible, Joel 2, uh, which is in Acts 2 as well. It just says, <clears throat> in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your flesh, okay, so you qualify there. The spirit's been poured out, it's poured out 2,000 years ago. Check, double check on that. Then it says your sons and daughters will prophesy. Well, if you're a son or daughter, mostly daughters here. So check, you'll prophesy. Okay, we're, we're, we're tracking here. So that's cool. I mean, you already see it in the Bible that it's God's will for you to prophesy since you're a human and the Spirit's been poured out and you know Jesus. And then it says your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. So that means on the young and old, you know, male, female, young, old, uh, you're going to have encounters. So not only are you going to have faith to prophesy, but you're going to have a high expectation that you'll receive visions, all right? And you'll have dreams. And so if you raise your expectation, just saying like, oh, I accept this is true. I see this in the Bible. I'm going to stop doubting. I'm going to stop questioning it's for me. I'm just going to say, oh, pretty clear. This is for me. And that simple just change of perspective in your mind will help you receive more and be consistent. Because you'll just have settled in your mind that you're not excluded from the promises of God. There's This is for you in absolutely every way. That if Jesus poured out the Spirit, then, yeah, I met all the qualifications. So this is for me. And, and you know, and what I love about this text and this, you know, this is, it's amazing because sons and daughters, so men and women, old and young, old men and men servants. And then I love this, men servants and maid servants. So everybody's included if you're. If you're rich, if you're poor, if you're a man, you're a woman, everybody gets to have dreams and have visions. And I'll just tell you that the more that you believe it, 
the more it will happen, the more that you'll receive it. Now, um, how, how you have an expectation, how you appropriate these promises, appropriate would be kind of the theological word of that, is that you've got to accept it as true, just in the most simple form that you can do that. And then every day, if you're like, even before I go to minister, I'll just review scriptures like this. And I'll be like, you know what? It's God's will that I prophesy. It's God's will that I get names. It's God's will that I get detail. It's God's will that I help unlock people's futures and destinies. And I just go in with that mindset because I know it's, I, I, you cross over from the place of saying like, oh, I hope God speaks to me when I minister today. Oh, I hope that I'm able to prophesy with accuracy. Like you, if you go in like that, man, you're, it's like an uphill battle because you're like, you're waiting for the evidence of the gift to operate before you have faith for it, right? But if, but if I just go in like, man, I, of course that's going to happen. It'd be, it'd be really weird if it didn't happen because it, it's obviously his will. It makes it so much easier for yourself to step into it, all right? You'll be more instant in it. You know, I remember back in the old days before I understood healing in a more profound way was I always, you have this like expectation because like you get, like, I don't know how my church, the way they did it is like, we're going to, let's say we're having a healing service. Like they just really charge up the intercessors and they really get the worship going and they create this atmosphere. And that's good. I would do that today. If I was having a healing service, I'd do it. But I found myself having faith in the atmosphere or having faith in the intercessors praying and like not having faith in the grocery store, if that makes sense, because I had faith because the atmosphere had to be right. And you had to do all these things. And then when I realized like, that's actually not true. Like I don't, you actually don't need this. Although that stuff is helpful and you probably will see more consistent breakthrough if you do that because God answers prayer and he loves worship. Uh, those things are not essential for my, for my gift to operate. Okay. So just all I need is what the Bible says and I can just do that. And it's very simple. So I hope that kind of just really lays it out in a simple way in a not spooky way um, that you can have visions, dreams, have an expectation. And for me, you know, if, I, a good thing to wake up and if you're like wrestling like oh i don't know if this is for me or i've never seen it in my life is just to like make it part of your confession write it on a note card put it in a reminder to say it to yourself and renew your mind around the topic and you know what it's going to happen and um I'm just going to kind of bust into this real quick i don't want to teach too long but um we can do some question and answer in this teaching i usually go through like the difference between old and new testament prophecy but i'm I'm not going to go into that too in depth today, unless you've got questions about it. Hey, James, I have a question. It's Allie. Sorry, I'm late. Hi, Allie. Um, I have a question. So I was in a work meeting and my coworker and I were praying because I work with a lot of Christians and the person basically said, man, you really hear from the Lord because I do feel really deeply in the spirit. So could partially feeling be prophetic as well, or is it more just what I'm feeling through that person, I'm still learning the gift of feeling and prophecy. So that's cool. They're like, you hear from Lord. You're like, yes, I do. I didn't say like that, but I thought I was like, I'm like trying not to be overly confident, but it's just, I'm sure. learning my gifts because I'm like in a new season with life coaching and deliverance. Cool. Yeah. So God speaks to us and the way we hear God's voice not that the way he speaks to us is probably the wrong way to say it. The way that we perceive his voice can happen in three main ways. One is you'll hear it in your mind. You'll hear it like a thought in your head, like a voice. That's pretty common. Another way is you'll have a vision, meaning you'll have some sort of picture imagery in your mind as you're talking to someone. Mm -hmm. That may be like, it'll stand out than more than just a thought. And the third way is kind of what you're describing is you'll feel it in your body. Sometimes you have a sensation, you'll have sensations in your body. I guess maybe the fourth way is you'll have, God can speak to you or you'll hear him through your intuition or your, like your, your knowing and your knower, your instinct, yeah. level, knowing, right? That's really common for people to say, God's, how do you know that? And you're like, I don't know. I just know it the way I know, <laughs> you know, like that means that God spoke to you in your instinctual level. It bypassed your like cognitive, like I thought about it into just a knowing. Got it. Yeah, so that's, those are kind of the four main ways in the past. We'd go into all these different, like break it down. I think it was too complicated. So four ways, God, you hear them in your mind, mm -hmm. you see visions, you have intuition or instinctual level hearing, or you feel sensations in your body. 
Yeah. So for me, like sometimes when I sleep at night, I really feel more in the spirit, like deeply, Mm -hmm. like extremely. So I can't sleep some nights. Like, okay. Okay. I hear you, Lord. Guess I got to pray. I hear you. But the Bible says you give sleep to those who you love. So I know. (laughs) The intercessor in the season of it again, every three months. So we can get you on the quarterly program. <laughs> right on. And, and I guess if we're talking questions, anybody else have any questions before we kind of breeze through? Any toughies? Tough questions out there. All right. Uh, feel free to chime in. I'm not observing the chat here. Let me pull that up. Cool. All right. So in the New Testament, it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, for all you can all prophesy one by one, by one by one, that all may learn and all may be encouraged. Okay, there it is. So again, you see it in the New Testament, not just the Old Testament, that you can all prophesy one by one. <clears throat> so we'll say this, that the, the expectation you put on the level of prophecy you intend to experience will really determine how you hear. Okay, so if you have an expectation that you'll prophesy like, that one person you know at church that really seems to hear from God, then you'll probably operate at their level, right? But if you just like, well, that's cool that Cindy does that or whoever does that at church, that's neat. But the Bible, when I look at it, it looks like this. And then you have a, an expectation that's like, well, you know, maybe I'll get something more in detail or, or I'll get it in a more profound way. And that will help you. So having a high expectation for the Holy Spirit, not of yourself necessarily, because you're not doing anything except receiving it and sharing it but a high expectation that God will, will do it. All right. So we'll do it with you and, and then you just go for it. All right. So first Corinthians 14, three, kind of moving on same chapter, but he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. So edification means to build up or strengthen. Exhort means to call near console And the word admonish, okay? So the word admonish just means to gently correct. So not that we're always coming down on people, but it is good to gently correct folks if they need it. And then comfort means just calm and affirm, okay? So you see, like, for our prophetic people, 90% of what you're going to share is going to be just positive, good stuff. And occasionally you may have to be like, oh, here's a corrective thing, not in like a harsh way, like you're a bad person, but you know, whether that's a forgiveness issue that someone may need or <clears throat> something that's hindering them from unlocking their future, sometimes God reveals that to us. <clears throat> okay. All right. So the type of prophecy we obviously do here for the most part is personal prophecy. So meaning it's just like personal words to your life. Um, you've seen in TV or maybe you've actually seen people in real life who have the sandwich board that are like, Jesus is coming. Repent. All right. And, you know, God bless. I kind of feel that's kind of a waste of good boldness. But you know what? At the end of the day, they're doing their best to love Jesus with the revelation they have. But we don't really prophesy in this group apocalyptically, meaning there's going to be a comet in 2029. Wormwood's coming. Like that would be like, would caution you against that. Until you're operating at a higher level of personal prophecy, would I really like put much weight in what you have to say there okay but let's just say you're like there's favor she's like james earthquakes hidden fresno tuesday i'd listen to you i'd be like okay cool favor um we'll we'll take that into consideration in prayer (laughs) but like i will tell favor listen if you say that publicly and it doesn't happen then i would expect you to publicly apologize if it didn't happen and just say hey I'm sorry. I shared a word. I was wrong. I'm human. And thanks for loving me. And I'd be like, great, no problem. (laughs) But I've actually held, I do hold my students accountable on this kind of thing. And I've had students actually quit the school because they couldn't handle being held accountable. So whatever. I'm never to embarrass you, but I figure if you're going to be public about it, where you need people that are going to love you enough to just hold you accountable, (laughs) right? Be coachable. You know, obviously, we don't want our prophecy to always be corrective. You never, you know, a lot of times people who are operating in this, you find that they're very corrective on their prophecy that everything's like fixing you or solving you or 
you know, you've got, everyone's got problems and they're like the God's mechanic for the spiritual realm. Like they're often themselves are in a very corrective season, right? Like they are, they're being corrected. And so the filter they're operating out is like correcting everybody else. So I would just like, if I noticed that I might just jump, pull you aside and Hey, what's happening in your life? I want to know more. But also that sometimes you've seen God reveals really personal stuff on this. Have you, have you, I mean, sometimes after two years, we've seen really intimate, deep stuff happen. And you're like, whoa, this is, this is crazy. But we know that no matter what God reveals is he reveals it to redeem it. He reveals even personal things to redeem your life because he cares for you. And uh, of course we want to be sensitive. If I was like calling somebody out, I would never be like, and you have an STD. You do want to be sensitive, right? You wouldn't just like put people on blast. We were not looking to do that. But like, <laughs> like, so I'm just using that as a very extreme example. I mean, or even, yeah, I'm not even going to tell that story. I have just some horror stories that would you'd cringe. You'd be like, this is cringeprophecy.com. Um, so we, you know, we want to be sensitive. If something God wants to redeem it and reveal it, if it's too sensitive, it's okay to just hold that word or ask me. Let's say you get a word that's like terrible. You're like, I'm so embarrassed to share this. But you feel unction like this is the Lord. He can always just message me. And say, well, how would you handle this? And we'll do our best to, to help someone. Okay. Um, a good kind of rule of thumb of how we prophesy, kind of our target and what we're looking for is we can find that in Ephesians 1, 18 through 21. Right. So it says, the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities, powers, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. So in that text, <laughs> there's three, three targets, and that is God wants you to know the hope of your calling. That is, he wants you to know why you breathe oxygen on planet Earth. He doesn't want you wandering like, why was I made? Like, you want you to know your purpose. So our prophecy, should the message should can often go to, here's the purpose of why you breathe air. Or here, this is what God's doing to strengthen the purpose of, of your life on Earth. Secondly, God, our prophecy can really often kind of hover around the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints, meaning what has God deposited in you as an inheritance that of, of Christ's inheritance in you? So whether that's giftings that he's put in you, like give the words of knowledge, healing, prophecy, he's deposited himself in you and prophecy can often call those things out and make those things come to the surface and operate. So we, or even just like the compassion, the love, the gift of helps, whatever God's deposited in you, prophecy and the message of prophecy can often draw those things out and help those things be activated in people's lives. And then finally, the power towards us to believe. God wants us to experience him. So oftentimes you'll see our prop will prophesy <clears throat> and then people experience his power, whether that's deliverance or healing or some crazy word. And then like something crazy, happens. a baby gets you know born or something like that. And then, um, or, <clears throat> or, you know, we experience his, a dream or we get those kind of testimonies all the time. So we want people to experience our prophecy to help people experience the power of God. Um, so I don't know. Should I go into some examples of prophecy in the Bible, in the life of Jesus? Addy has a question. Um, she, she posted it there. It's just Sorry if I, my spelling's atrocious tonight. I said, can you only be prophetic to those closest to us? How, like I'm more that? prophetic with people that I'm really close with and feeling with. But sometimes <laughs> I feel other people's stuff, but more like I'm a feeler more close to like my mom and certain friends. But sometimes on the street, I feel people, I'll get words for people on the street and whatnot. And I'm trying to get the courage to use it when I see them. Sure. <clears throat> well, that made sense but I'm i think sure. your your um <clears throat> your prophetic gift will often operate at your level of your comfort okay so if you're comfortable in a situation and you're not nervous and you're not mind's not all over the place you'll find it easier to like tune in and, and dial into what the holy spirit's saying where if maybe you're outside and you you're maybe an introvert and it's hard for you to talk to strangers then it would be harder for you to maybe tune in like that 
But Got when, it. You know, when you're at peace, it's easier to kind of hear God. I'm an sense. extrovert slash introvert. So it comes in. Omnivert. Yep. All right. Um, all right here. Well, here's some examples. We'll do a couple examples of Jesus doing prophetic, personal prophetic stuff for kind of this, not like apocalyptic or, I mean, he does like prophesy about the temple and all that stuff. But in these passages, like Luke 19, 28 through 31, says, uh, <clears throat> when he said this, he went on going up to Jerusalem and it came to pass that he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount called Olivet. And he sent two of his, two of his disciples. He said, go into the village opposite you where you enter and you'll find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you loosening it? Say to them, because the Lord has need of it. So he sends these guys to go get a donkey prophetically and, and find it. And uh, that's something prophecy obviously happens in the future. So <clears throat> he told them where it would be. And sure enough, it was there. And uh, he does the same thing when he finds the, the house where they're going to eat Passover. He has the people, you know, follow this guy with a jar on his head and uh, go into the house and tell him where can the master, you know, be. So that's also Mark 14, 13 and 13 through 15. So there's passages where Jesus prophesies in detail in, in this way. But we also see him do words of knowledge, like where Jesus gets people's names, like Luke 19 through two, two through five, where he gets Zacchaeus's name. So he's walking, he looks up in, in the Zacchaeus is in the tree. So this is Zacchaeus. I got to eat with you today. So there's an example of Jesus doing names. And, uh, you know, then you've got like the woman, uh, what was it, John 4, where she, uh, <clears throat> you know, woman with the, at the well, he gives her all sorts of words of knowledge. And so you see that the prophetic, and even the lady, like he gives her a bunch of words of knowledge. He tells her all about her life. And then she says, I perceive you're a prophet. So that gives you an idea that words of knowledge is, is part of the prophetic or part of the prop, pro prophet office. Like she recognized, oh, this is what prophets do. They can do this kind of thing. So that kind of gives you an idea that we're not just only doing things in the future. We can see things in the past and the future, perceive those things. All right. So we'll just kind of go over our basic prophetic structure, what we see in the Bible. But before I go on to that, let's see if there's any other tough questions out there. All right. Breaking me down, guys. All right. So our prophetic structure here that we've developed is one. First thing we do is an identifier. June, you'll be able to type this for me or Erica or somebody. One is identifier. So this would be a God's identifying who you're supposed to give a word to, All right? So it can be a person. And the way that we typically would give this would be, <clears throat> there's someone here that has a headache and you're wearing brown pants, All right? So that would be an identifier. Some sort of like, you know, this is for a specific person and then you got, you got more to go. So you found, let's say I've got Erica. Like, oh, Erica, that's my person. And I got an identifying word, <laughs> meaning what I have to say to them is for her. Then we're going to come in with supporting content. We're going to ask God, like, what are some other details about her life uh, or other, you know, how she is in her mind or, or what's happening with her right now that you'd want to speak to? And we call this supporting content. All right. So we give a word. There may be some more information about their life that God's wanting to do. And the reason that we give supporting content is that we're helping build a foundation where this person knows that God's speaking that God, only God can know these things about their life. In fact, it says about prophecy that it shares the, the secrets of our heart, details of our life. So um, we want people to know that we've identified them. God knows them through, you know, words of knowledge typically. And then the third part is message. God's going to have a message for this person. He's got something to say, something encouraging, typically, kind of what we went over. All right. So those are kind of the three <clears throat> main things of a word. And, uh, and then sometimes it comes with a sign. Okay. So this is like A E I O U and sometimes Y. Sometimes you get a sign that comes with your prophetic word. <clears throat> and that can be like, you know, you've given this people a word, you've identified them, you've given some words of knowledge, you give them a message. And then you may have this function to say, as a sign to you that what I'm saying comes from God. He's going to heal your baby toe or whatever, you know, like 
then there's a sign that comes with it. And so that we see this in the structure most identified in Acts 9. Um, <laughs> nice. And then, uh, or we see it like especially with um, Saul when he prophesies over, or Samuel when he prophesies over Saul there in, in second, as a first Samuel, I believe. <clears throat> so identifier, sporting content, message. This is what our act activations will be around like tonight. We're going to be working on this stuff. And that's why we're heavy on words of knowledge, because we're wanting to grow in this. Now, the Western Church has no problem giving messages. In fact, we're good at it. That is like our strength in the prophetic. We know how to share an encouraging word. We know how to even share like a corrective word with love. But oftentimes those words are not, they don't have the, ma the mass impact that they're intended to have because they don't come with the other stuff. There's not like strong words of knowledge that comes with it. Because the words of knowledge is to help that person have faith for the message that God's about to give them. If you just give them a message without laying the proper steps for them to have faith for it, they're going to have a hard time receiving it, right? Does that make sense? So we want to be robust in, our, in the way that we give our words. <clears throat> All right, so that is, that is the brief rundown on prophecy. James's take on it simple structure and i can go more in depth maybe we'll go we have elements of prophecy i think it's like the six elements of prophecy or six or seven kind of what categories prophecy will operate in but we won't do that all tonight because i'll keep you here and you'll be bored you'll just be looking down at your phone on facebook angry birds those birds are just so angry just kidding <laughs> no facebook amen man okay Let's take a little stretch. How many people we got on here? We got 12, 15, 16. Should we just keep it in the room tonight? How do you guys feel about that? Okay. All right. My dudes. All right. Well, let's just jump into some exercises, some boot camp exercises. We will work on, let's work on some identifiers. We'll just start there. Okay. So you want to have a notebook if you got one. Andy, I go through about a zillion of these. All righty. And again, <clears throat> this is a safe place. Oh, and one thing I also wanted to mention about New Testament prophecy. <coughs> Apologize about the stupid tickle. It's killing me. Not killing me. My mom would be like, don't confess that, son. That's what moms do. All right. Is that it says that. One, you can all prophesy one by one. That's First Corinthians. We just quoted that. That, and it says that the others may judge. Okay, so the fact that the Bible says that you can prophesy one by one and it's going to be judged shows you that not everybody in the New Testament got the words right 100% of the time. Okay, that shows you that you can miss a word because if it has to be judged, it means being judged whether it's right or wrong, whether it's from God or not from God. Okay, so this should give you kind of context. Oh, even in the New Testament, <clears throat> in Paul's day, there were people giving prophetic words publicly that may not have been spot on. In fact, they may have been not so spot on. They needed to be judged by a group of people. And that's, you know, we have a community here. If you give a crazy word, we'll judge it. We'll help you. We won't judge you. We love you. Kiss, kiss. But we will judge your word. Okay. Don't get so attached to your word that it becomes personal. Right. If you're doing that, you, you've cr you crossed the line. <clears throat> you don't, in poetry, I used to, I was a creative writing major. You do poetry workshops, okay? And you always have that person that comes in that they've never shared their poems with anybody, all right? And then they share it, and then it gets criticized because it's a workshop, okay? That's what we do. And then the person's butt hurt, and they're, they've got their feelings hurt because someone criticized their poetry. Well, listen, they're not criticizing you as a person. They're criticizing your poem, okay? Because it's a poetry workshop. In the same way, if, you're, if your word gets judged, don't get butthurt about your word. You are not your word. It's just your word. We love you, okay? So you, gotta, you really have to detach those things and not take it personally. Don't feel rejection, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Poetry workshop in University of Montana is so brutal. I worked with the, my mentor was the Poet Laureate of, of Montana. And tell, talk about putting your emotions on the shelf. They would just crush you. So funny. Look back. All right. 
Yeah. It was a workshop you had to try out for. I don't know. Oh, what a weird thing, right? You literally had to try out to be in the workshop. It's like going to varsity league or something. Anyways, I'll share my poems with you. <laughs> okay. So but I just want to give that qualifier for you. Don't take it personally. We love you. Okay. Let's do some identifiers. So what we're going to look for, I'm going to walk you through. We're just going to ask the Lord some questions. We're going to ask him about people. Help, him, help us identify people. And that's it. That's all the exercise is. There's no supporting content necessarily. There's no word about no message in the sense. Just practice for identification. Okay? All right. <clears throat> we'll do this for like maybe 20 minutes. We'll have you guys share. Let's do it. Okay. Holy Spirit, thanks for being present and thanks for being a good friend. The paraclete hooking it up. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you would speak to us tonight. Help us to get on the train of the prophetic. Help us get some good identifiers in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. Okay. Well, let's ask the Lord. Holy Spirit, help us with an identifier. Give us, since we're all probably, hopefully wearing pants, we're going to ask for some pants colors. Lord, would you show us my identifier of person that I'm going to give a word to, but it gets my identifiers for what is the pants color that they're wearing? All right. It was simple. It's not even that hard. All right. I'll just write whatever spontaneously comes to you there. Don't stress. Okay. Let's ask the Lord, this person, let's ask him, um, what is a letter, when I'm going for a name, what's a letter associated with this person? All right, just one letter. Okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to ask the Lord, is there, well, like, is there a need this person has? Just whether that's healing or any need you're wanting to identify, Lord, what is a need that this person has? All right, so you, you ask three questions, then you can go ahead and <clears throat> look at your picture or look at it here on your paper and just see what stands out to you the most. And then kind of put a check. It might be one or two or all three is fine, but usually something's going to stand out. And that can be what you lead with on your identifier. Thirty seconds. Let me grab a water real fast. Back again. All right, guys. Well, I will share my first one. All right. I saw pants wise, I saw someone wearing red pattern jammies, bottoms. I don't know. If that makes sense to anybody. I also saw the letter D. So I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but we're throwing it out there. I'm faithful to my own exercise. We'll give it a second. See if it lands. If it doesn't, no sweat. Any red jammies out there? I have red jammy pants on. All right, what's the letter D mean to you? Uh, it's my husband's middle initial. Okay, 
cool. It landed. Yes. <laughs> well, I was seeing them being like red and, and white. I don't know. I'm a red and white. Does that make sense? Yeah, they're they're um, Eeyore pants. And he's red with white and gray and green. Eeyore. Uh, Lost my tail again. All right. Oh, well, I know. Poor Eeyore. All right. Well, let's bust through it. We'll, um, we'll just go quickly. Favor, what do you got, my friend? I'm not like 100% sure. That's okay. But I got pink pants. Well, trousers. <laughs> Riches. <laughs> okay. But I wasn't sure about it. Okay. We'll just go share it. What we'll do is we'll bust through it since we got a handful of people in here. And then if it lands, just type it in the chat here. Oh, that's me. All right. Okay. I yeah. have pink pants and the letter J. That's it for me. Dang, I'm not wearing pink pants. Erica. I got great sweatpants and the letter P. Okay. And I guess if this is making sense, just drop it in the chat. Hey, that's me. All right, Jacqueline. Um, I got uh, tie dyed pants, the letter G. Okay, <laughs> I like these wild pants. <laughs> Miss Tanya. Um, I got gray pants and the letter E. Gray pants. To gist. I have. Blue jeans and the letter P. Miss Claire. Yeah. Oh, I was just about to type. <laughs> I got jeans on and peace, my brother. But anyway, I'll do that in a minute. Okay. <laughs> um, I got actually not a block color. I got a pattern, patterned, pattern pants. I don't know, pull ups, patterned, and the letter K. Right. Lana Marie. Um, I also had blue jeans and the letter A. Allie, did you want to share? Oh yeah, I had red pants and the letter T. What what color pants? Red. Red. Awesome. Sir Sean. I had blue jeans and a letter B. Hey, is that the second one? That's that? I had B. That's cool. Okay. Dang. Uh, I have both. I have P and B, but P was my first choice. Pink and then water. B related to the P word. <laughs> okay. Wait, is that? Oh, okay. And that's Claire. Okay. So I'm constantly highlighting. Peter, I guess. Okay. Holly. Um, so I um I'm not really sure if I got the pants in the um the letter, but I did feel like I was getting other stuff. Share what you got. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> um so um I don't know if I was like supposed to do this, but I actually feel like I um got a word for a specific person okay well, so. well why don't you well, let's hold that since we're in the middle of this exercise okay. write it down don't forget it and we'll get there okay because we'll be doing all the all components tonight all right sounds good cool tc martin what do you got for me i, was thinking of I actually got a dress and the letter p <laughs> what color was your dress it was dark. Okay. Right on. Like a house dress. Nice. All right, Diana. Diana. I got, oh, I'm sorry. Are there two of us here? Oh, well, what, Diana? <laughs> oh, yeah, Diana Figueroa. <laughs> oh, sorry, Doc. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Go ahead. I got khaki pants and the letter L. And then I got blue jeans and the letter M. Okay. Nice. Getting the oil flowing. 
How about the other Diana? What do you got? <laughs> uh, I got red pants and the letter K. And the letter what? Uh, K. Okay. And then Shante is our last person on this exercise. <clears throat> Gone. Oh. Sorry, I wasn't totally tuning in, but um, I forgot the color. I was kind of, I was kind of busy, so I heard it, but I wasn't able to like. Okay, Lord. <laughs> All good. Sorry. No sweat. Um, <laughs> it comes back to mind. I'll type it up. Cool. All right, guys. So the reason I kind of just did that and didn't just let you kind of do it because the people. Or never feel uncomfortable, I want you to just go ahead and get used to speaking it out and doing it. All right. Okay, so if look on the chat here, and please write in the chat if you're like, oh, that that's me or that made sense to me. All right. Okay. And then this can be your person as we kind of go through this exercise. This will be your person. Well, June, I am wearing dark basketball shorts, but M, I don't have any M's in the family that I know of. Except that I am a man. Surprise. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. All right, so you just want to take a note on the person that God's helped you identify. Write that name down. Now we're going to go in a deeper detail on our supporting content for our person. And if you didn't land your word or you're not sure, you didn't get any response, <clears throat> what you want to do is ask in this next exercise, ask the Lord, who is it you're wanting me to, I, you know, speak to or, or minister to, okay? So if you didn't get a response, that's okay. We're, you're going to focus on this next person that God highlights to you, okay? <clears throat> In exercise two, supporting content. All right. So you got your target. I've got mine, Jacqueline. I don't know. All I know is your brother's middle name, D. And I'm going to get a, you know, see what... Husband. Oh. Husband's middle oh. name. Husband's middle name. My apologies. <clears throat> so we're going to ask God some supporting content. And so in when you're getting supporting content, it can often be the inner workings of that person's life or inner like what's happening, some details of what's happening in their life. And it, I mean, it could be further detail on like their names or their birthdays and stuff, but want to kind of broaden it a little bit, right? So I'll say, Holy Spirit, what is a detail you'd like to share about this person that would help them have faith that this comes from God. So what's a detail about this person's life that would help them have faith that what I'm hearing comes from you? Just whatever comes. All right, let's ask the Lord, is there uh, an important month associated with this person? Is there an important month for this person? <laughs> All right, and then we'll ask the Lord, what's the secret about their life that only you would know? All right, what's the secret about this person's life that only you would know?
Don't overthink it too hard. Maybe do overthink it. Just kidding. All right. I will share what I've got here. Um, you know, you want to see the details that most stand out to you. So I actually didn't think too hard about that. Okay. So when, as I'm thinking about your husband in this exercise, Jack, that I'm seeing the month of December. I don't know if that's a meaningful month. Uh, my daughter's birthday is in December. Okay. Okay. And then the other image I had of him was pitching baseball or throwing baseball. I don't know if that means anything to him. He played church league and he loves the Dodgers. Oh, he loves the Dodgers. Okay. All right. And then I guess the last thing I said was sensing was I saw him playing or building on a wooden floor, sitting on a wooden floor. So I don't know if that's something he did when he was little or if that makes sense at all. He likes to play with my grandkids, the, my grandsons on the floor. Okay. All right. Feels like we're building up to a family word here on the message. So <laughs> we'll get there here shortly. Right on. Right on. Okay, guys. We'll run through it once again. Joan, June, did I cut you out of the last exercise? I feel like you did not share. Did you want to share both now real quick? So rude. I apologize. I went right to favor because she's got the favor. It's okay. Favor, I forget. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so the identifiers were basketball shorts and the letter M, like Mary. Um, and then for supporting content this time, I got the month of May and the and a scar somewhere on their body with three lines. Interesting. I'm feeling like this word applies to me, June. I know. I was trying really not hard not to, but mm -hmm. like, that's what I got. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm happy to pray for you. <laughs> What's weird is I was in a biking accident when I was 15 and I have three distinct scars on my back. No way. I do. Okay. Well then, yeah, that's for you. All right. I'm excited for the message. Now I'm bated breath anticipation. All right. Is good. Your birthday in May, James. All right, this is the this is a long play prophetic word. All right, favor. <laughs> what do you got? Isn't your birthday in May, James? It is in May. Yeah, I just had a birthday. Oh, yeah, forty three and feeling free, my friend. <laughs> um, so I had February as the month. Um, I saw butterflies, so I don't know if that's significant to the person, but. Oh, who's the person that God was highlighting for you? Oh, it was, oh God. I'm finding it really hard today. I don't know why. But it was Tegis. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Yeah. Hi, Tegis. Um, I saw butterflies. I don't know if that means anything, but that was what I saw. Um, and then the for the information about them was that they found it difficult to make friends with it when they were younger. I don't know if that's a thing or not a thing, but we tried. Blast! But the butterfly thing was like right on. Yeah, I saw butterflies. That was the main thing that I saw. It's like a theme for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's quite the opposite. I was like always the most popular girl in the school. But the sense I got was that you were surrounded by people, but as for like, like when I say friends, I don't mean like, surrounded by you but like friends like if you needed a shoulder to cry on mm. you had someone. anyway you can move on while you think about that <laughs> okay, okay. Ruminate. Thank you. <laughs> ruminate on that okay erica are you there are you attending to grace both <laughs> and my internet's kind of unstable but um so, so sorry, James, you, we were supposed to ask the Lord if this word was like, he was highlighting someone from here from the chat, right? Yeah, if you didn't get, if your identifier didn't identify somebody, then yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, does that, is anyone wearing an orange shirt? I think that was more highlighted than the pants I got. No? Well, the people are probably with the cameras off. 
No, okay. Then yeah, no, I didn't ask the lawyer who was this for or anything. So okay. Skip a reverse by oh, play no. Uno. You got it. Ms. Jacqueline, what do we have here? Oh, nobody was highlighted, but I got the month of June. And this is so random. Can't be anybody. Um this person really hates jujubes. I was like, who eats jujubes? I hate jujubes. But anyway, there it was. What is a jujube? It's a little tiny candy. Oh. It's like a flame destroyer. Yeah. It's old. Yeah, I love the black licorice. It's so funny. Uh, that used to be a nickname for me. Oh. G, June and nickname. Oh, did you like the nickname? I mean, it was. I didn't care one way or the other. I didn't have like a distinct dislike for it. But... Sweet. Yeah. All right. I like it. That's close enough. Maybe Jacqueline's dislike for Jujubees was infecting her interpretation. <laughs> All right, Tanya, what well, yeah. you uh, Well, I got a Martin and I kept getting like this, these books opening up. Um, like from the middle page, flipping. It's like, do you like to read? Oh yeah, I do. Okay. And then the month I got for you, is there anything significant about April? It's my mom's birthday. Okay. Then for the um, secret thing, I got this image of you looking at these, um, like at water levels, like maybe you had an incident where, I don't know, like you almost drowned or something. In the pool, and you could see like the the water level. Uh, yeah, I used to be a lifeguard, so I had no problem with water. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't swim as much now. But um, yeah, I still love water. Very cool. Cool. All right, Tanya, you're hearing. Yes, on point. <laughs> Solid tigus. Um, Claire, does the does Peter mean anything to you or Steve? The name Peter or Steve? Yeah, you Claire. Yes, I shall put it in the chat if you didn't see it. Peter is my brother, my one and only sibling. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, does he have glasses, and is the number fifty-two mean anything? He wears glasses because he's coming up 74, I think. <laughs> um, but 52, not does it mean anything to me, 52. Um, not off the top of my head, no. <laughs> okay. And then I had also June, June or May, but really like spring. I'll take June because my daughter's supposed to give birth to a baby on Friday and my daughter-in-law a few days after her. So <laughs> June is very relevant for me right now. Okay. Actually, my brother's birthday is June 10th and my daughter is, her due date is June 10th. So <laughs> there we go. Cool. Awesome. Oh, good job, Tigus, and yeah. all that good stuff. All right, Claire, what did you receive? Um, well, I, I had asked uh, for patent pants and K, and um, I think that's Sean. Yeah. Anyway, oh, was that okay to say that? <laughs> um, yeah, what's happening in your life? I, I thought that you just had um, some good results, um, study results or exams or whatever, but uh, you did well. That's one thing that came to mind. The month was October. And um, um, <laughs> that could be totally off of her, but what popped into mind was that you are not interested in um, 
amusement parks. They don't thrill you. You can really pass on that. But <laughs> you're a young guy, so I'm thinking, oh, he probably loves it. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, there we go. Um, my exams went well. Um, my brother's birthday is in October. And I actually love amusement parks. So. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'm glad you do. I'm glad you do. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Good job. <clears throat> yeah, Lana Marie. Um, I wasn't sure about the first thing I did. Uh, I had elbow. And the secret was um, that they have a journal with the Jeremiah 29 11 verse, if I know the plans, that it's either on the cover or featured in the journal. Okay. Does that, does that mean anything to anybody? And I had the month May, uh, April, sorry. I have a journal that has Jeremiah 29 11 on it. <laughs> <laughs> and April um, is actually my dad's birthday. <laughs> I forget what was the first item you pointed out before you. Al um, elbow. Elbow? Yeah. Okay, elbow. I have a scar of, on one of my elbows <laughs> from when mm -hmm. I was younger. Okay. Thank you. Very cool. All right, Allie, did you want to share? Sorry, hold on. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't feel like it's relative because everyone had stuff. And okay. no worries. Sorry, <laughs> it's all new to me. <laughs> all good. In I'm just soaking it in. Cool. Learning tonight. <laughs> Awesome. Sean, what do you have, my friend? Um, I had for Claire. <clears throat> I kept getting like basketball. Do you do you enjoy watching basketball or does like your uh your husband enjoy watching basketball or oh, oh no? yes, yes. Um husband, son, all about well, every sport, football, but yes, we know who won tonight, the uh <laughs> what are the the Golden Gate people, warriors. <laughs> Very <Yeah>. much. <laughs> um, and then I also saw like a garden hose. So do you like to garden a lot or? That's amazing. <laughs> you know, we're in a bit of a drought when can't do a lot of watering, but I did just put from a hose today, put it in the watering can and just watered a few geraniums that were a bit thirsty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, and then also, is March an important month for you at all? Like maybe specifically like this past March, maybe? My, my daughter was born March 31st. I thought, oh, good. Not an April Fool's baby, but um, March. Well, other than that, nothing really comes to mind. But um, yeah. Thank you, Sean. Awesome. Yep. You guys are doing all great. Then, Ali, did you want to jump back in or, or is it appropriate now or do you want to wait till the message time? You still like get a message. Um, so, yeah, I guess I could wait till the. the okay. Next, uh, we'll be working on our message. We'll, we'll check back in. And TC Martin. Okay. I actually had for Holly and I had the month of April and I had a birthmark on the back of her leg and um, she is desiring uh, salvation for a very dear loved one that's not saved. Yeah, so um, I um, April is well. April April is the month before my um, my birth month because my birthday is in May. Um, 
and April was the month that um, I recently moved. My mom and I recently moved and uh, in, in April. So um, yeah, so that was definitely a significant month. Um, I actually think I do have a birthmark on my leg. Yeah. <laughs> and um, there is a close relative, well, more than one actually, who um, for whom I am believing um, salvation and praying. So yeah, right on. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll do Diane Figueroa. I didn't have anyone specifically highlighted to me, but um, I did hear September and May and July. All right. Yeah. Well, let us know if that lands for anybody. <laughs> I think your rap name should be Lil Fig. How about that? You'd kill it. <laughs> so many bars. Oh my God. That's Good. funny. <laughs> Good effort. I appreciate it. All right. I don't know, Shante, are you with us? Or are you watching The Bachelor? That is the real question. Prophetic bars. <laughs> Cold as ice. I don't even know if The Bachelor's on. I just made that. I'm up. here, but I don't have anything. <laughs> okay. I, and I don't even watch The Bachelor. So yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't have anything right now. Sorry. <laughs> cool. Um, I was going to type in the chat, but I know, I don't know who just said that, but September, July, and May, I don't know it's for me, but those months, one is my brother's, one is his wife, and then the other one is his oldest son. Oh, okay. With the months? With Diana. Okay, great. Awesome. <laughs> All right, and Diana, she, what do you got? Last one. She got slain in the spirit. She's out. All right, well, we'll circle back. <clears throat> guys, you're doing great. I'm like so surprised at your accuracy. You guys are killing it. Either you guys grew a lot when I was away and I should stay away longer or you're just doing great. No, I'm really proud of you. Great job. <laughs> Excuse me. Just a, a bit of tuberculosis, as they say. Just kidding. <laughs> Remember, people are like in the olden times, always dying of that one, right? Now they're just a little antibiotics. You're all good. All right. Now we're getting onto our message. Let's give a seventh inning stretch. Stretch it out. Ah. I have a daughter. Plum is her name, and uh, she's like has this like really strange loyalty to Jesus which is great, like, but she's nine. And so whenever, <laughs> I don't know where she got this, but like whenever she sees like Pokemon and like she'll like watch Pokemon and they do like a meditation thing like this, she's like, no, <laughs> she's like so against it. And whenever she, people would say like namaste, she's like, never, namaste is evil. <laughs> so I'm like, please calm down. like. <laughs> Namaste just means I see God in you, which is not that bad of a thing, <laughs> all right? But, dude, I don't know. Kids are so funny. What they, they get on, like, she's, like, so loyal to Jesus. She's like, we do not pray. What is it? Like, Namaste is like this, right? She's like, we don't pray like this. We're praying like this. <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. So funny. Did I tell her yoga is bad? But yes, the practice of yoga to the... In worship is definitely no bueno. Yes, Plum is a great name. We actually got that name in a dream. We couldn't get pregnant, right? We were trying for a while. And then um, what happened was my <clears throat> my wife's grandma had a dream. And then she had this dream where she, she was eating plums out of my wife's hair. Like, her, like my wife's hair was literally producing plums, okay? Weird dream, right? And then she's eating these plums. They're really good and juicy. And so then she calls us. She's like, oh, I had this great dream from the Lord. You're pregnant with a girl. 
we're like, Grandma, there's just no way. We've been trying forever. We're not pregnant. She's like, no, you're pregnant. In fact, I told my Bible study, we are praising God for you. <laughs> Korean grandma, that's uh, it's not true. But sure enough, we were pregnant. So we named her Plum. So there you go. <laughs> we weren't just trying to be cool, like Apple or whatever. Who's that lady that has that baby named Apple? Or actually, like a teenager now. Well, what is that girl? What is her name? Help me. You don't the blonde her? lady, right? Yeah, blonde, blonde was in a... Uh, was in um, Meet the Parents, right? Gwyneth Paltrow, thank you. Thank you, Brain, good work. Cheers, Brain. All right, here we go. Let's, uh, let's get our message. So let's say, Holy Spirit, I ask that you just speak to us the message you're wanting to communicate to our people. I ask that you show us what's in your mind, what's in your heart for them right now in Jesus' name. Ah, all right. All right. So the first question we're going to ask the Lord is, what is on your mind for this person? And if you get a picture, the message doesn't come like a message. You see a picture, just write the picture down without overinterpreting it. I'll ask God, what are you leading this person to, or what are you doing in their life? Where are you leading them right now? Let's ask the Lord, what's a word of encouragement they have for this person? So <clears throat> if you're having a hard time kind of connecting those, just look at kind of those details and See what makes sense, see what stands out, and just share that. All right, so Jacqueline, what I got for your husband with the middle name D is I saw God wanting to lift like a heavy burden from him. So there's been a heavy burden that he's been under or even something that's been heavy on his heart. I don't know, I was seeing his heart. And it's felt like God wanted to encourage him, strengthen his heart. Um, and I saw God wanting to give him cheerful love for himself. So I don't know what that means. I've never had a word like that, but just like to love yourself. And I felt like your husband really valued <clears throat> when he was younger, like valued being young, valued being, a being able to do things. And that I think like it may be discouraging as you get older to not be able to do the things you want to do. But I felt like the Lord say, I like the way you age. Don't worry about that. And, uh, and then the last thing that the Lord wanted to encourage him to say, I will shepherd you. Like no matter what season you're in, I'm going to shepherd you. Be encouraged. Yeah, that, that's real encouraging. He, he went through a lot being my caretaker when I was going through cancer. <clears throat> and it, it really took a toll on him. Mm. And he, he still catches himself you know being under that sure and his self-confidence has you know been shook over the years with people and disappointments and stuff so I, and yeah he's getting he's maturing he's not getting older he's maturing that's he silver fox it. god bless him <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right june what do you got You're muted. 
Thank you. I would have just talked to the screen. Um, so the first thing I saw was a scene from like Cirque du Soleil. Um, and there are acrobatics and like people flying through the air and like it was just a really cool scene. Um, and the first thing I thought of when, the, when you asked what's on your mind or what do you feel towards this person or something like that. I don't know what questions you ask anymore. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Go but on. I felt just the Lord, just such pride um, that he's so proud of you for being able to do all the things that you're able to do and that you've been specifically trained for these moments. Um, not everybody can perform in Cirque du Soleil, right? Like it's something that's very specifically you have to train for and, and things like that. And um, I saw you going from like a trapeze and then jumping through three fire hoops <laughs> um, and then like catching on to somebody else's arms. And um, what I heard the Lord say was, you're not going to get burned. Um, and I feel like as you take that leap of faith, that you're not going to get burned, that it's not going to hurt you. So there you go. Amen. Thank you. I received it. Amen. All right, we got favor. What's happening? Hi. So the thing that I got was a bit random for me, but um I just heard hope and I just had this image of you like like God almost like showering you, like you were in a shower, but the shower was of hope. And I don't know if you've been in a season where things are looking very bleak or like you've just been looking at the world and thinking what on earth is going on. And you've just been feeling like, is there a point to all of this? But I just feel like God wants you to know that he's still in control and that he's already won the battle and that there is hope and that you can bring hope to wherever it is that you go. So I just it's like you were just under the shower of rain and like but the rain was just hope and it's just I don't know it's just like I don't know if you're just seeing everything like in a really dark way but I just feel like God wants to just shine a light on you just so you know that everything will be okay not just with you but in the world in general so yeah cool <clears throat> Jacqueline who did you have Oh, uh, let's see. I had June and I I know June a little bit, but not not, not like I want to. <laughs> but I, let's I felt that. like I know I, we'll get there. Um, I felt like he said that the dreams that you that have been held back are being brought are breaking through in spite of the enemy's desperation to keep it contained. And I felt like the amount of hope deferred has tainted a lot of the things around you, but I feel like he's lancing that wound and it's going to get cleaned out. And that tree of life that's going to come from that mm. is, is going to be such a, an amazing thing that it, it, it went beyond your dreams. Mm. Amen. Thank you. Lori. Tanya in Arizona. What's happening? Um, well, I got a couple of images, but the first one I got was um, of this big eagle standing, casting a shadow over like a beach. And then I got the image of, this is from Martin still sitting on the surf, uh, watching the surf go in and out. Um, and the message that I got was that sh there's been like some things that, um, that you've been standing boldly and fearlessly for, and the Lord is really proud about that, happy for you, and that 
He just wants you to know that he is your guiding light and the wind beneath your wings. And so he just wants you to um, take time from whatever it is that was pressing and rest. And that's really what I got. So enjoy that release on the beach. Sweet. And then <laughs> Tigus. Claire, this is I think for your for your brother Peter. Um, and I felt like the Lord was saying, Well done, my faithful servant. Um I also felt like he's really in the midst of your relationship between you and him, between you and Peter, that the Lord is really breathing on your relationship and has been for a very long time. And he just enjoys the relationship that you both have. And I also felt that, um, I mean, I saw like the um, like territory expanding. So I guess it, it goes back to you you know, <laughs> having more babies in the family. <laughs> so that's what I had like earlier. Um, but yeah, and I, and I wasn't sure, um, but if he's in a decision-making um, place right now, that he is supposed to actually go forward with that and, and, and um, he wants to expand the territory, whatever that might look like, but that you know he wants to yeah if that resonates claire did you did you start off by presuming he's a believer because he's not no i'm not no sure. no that look no that's fine no he is um yeah he's never um i've just been to england i stayed with him and it was a very good visit and um yeah, he's always called me sis because I'm his younger, <laughs> younger sibling. But uh, we, we, we have both had, obviously, we both had alcoholic parents and he always cared for me. He kind of washed out for me. And even in this season, even in this season, uh, with what the conversation, how it went um, on, on two or three different occasions, because I saw it girlfriends I've had for many years, but I were Easter, Saturday and Sunday, I was primarily with them. And there was just a difference in him, just a difference in him, not because I'm a believer or anything, but, um, you know, that I'm okay and uh, just looking out for me. And I think there is a decision in, in his heart and mind um, that I think I'm a little privy to that I hope he makes a good decision on it. So let's see. So that, that resonated very well. Thank you. Uh -huh. well, Thanks, Tigas. Mom, cool. Claire, what do you have? Yeah, well, um, I'm, I'm staying with Sean here. And uh, yeah, I just felt the Holy Spirit say, um, Sean, pursue your dream. I expect you're going to have many, many dreams because you're a young man. But I think you have perhaps something on your mind that you want to pursue. And um, what are you leading them to right now or leading Sean? And um, and I waited and, and um, I wrote to meet the right people to help this dream move forward. Might not just sit on your lap right away. OK, and then a word of encouragement. The dream will be fulfilled. Um, um, and it will come just at the right time. You don't have to push it. You don't have to make this happen. Because God sees your heart. He sees what you're dreaming for. You'll bring the, bring the right people in your path and um, it will come to fruition as and when our good father god or jesus holy spirit um designs it to take place so there we go that's what i had thank you that was like yeah that was spot on thank you claire and yeah. i don't know what the dream is but there we go <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i don't need to know that <laughs> but he's got <laughs> you back that's what what you do need to know <laughs> Thank Bless you. your heart. Bless your heart, uh, Sean. All right, Lana Marie. So I just heard the word "staples," and I wondered if that would mean anything to you. To who? Uh, this is Diana. 
don't know if I can say your last name. <laughs> Little Fig. That is. <laughs> is that going to stick, James? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Lana. The just I had the word staples, like staples from a like when you staple paper together. I do a lot of stapling at work. <laughs> <laughs> I do paralegal work, so I'm always stapling packets or you know, outgoing <laughs> correspondence. Um. I wondered if it also, because um, it's like a joining and a binding together, um, if it would uh, possibly mean that you are very key in implementing, like bringing people or parties together uh, that might not otherwise agree on things, but you are just, um, you know, part of, um, how would you call it, facilitating that. But, but maybe it's just your practical work. <laughs> um, so bringing in people together that don't necessarily agree on things, is that what you said? Yeah. Right. Well, this weekend I actually had a breakthrough with family that had not spoken in five years. Wow. So this weekend <laughs> there was a reunion happening. So maybe it has to do with that. Well, that's yeah. exciting, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very cool. <clears throat> We've got uh, Sean. Yes, I uh, had Claire. Um, so the first thing that I saw was I saw like a like a tiara um, overview, and like the Lord was just like really highlighting. Um, how you like you're like a princess to him like you're like royalty to him um and then i saw like you and jesus walking um beside like still waters like in psalm 23 um i was just sensing like that intimacy and that nearness and that communion with him and like at the same time he was teaching you things um while you guys were walking aside um and i felt like he was letting you know to he was telling you like that you're never left alone, that he's always with you. So thank you, Sean. That that's beautiful. I just written that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the king of kings, I'm his princess, so I'm you know <laughs> anyway, um, just to know that I have that nearness and I and I the desire him to continue to teach me. And he'll never leave me or, or, or forsake me. And he's always with me. Very comforting, very encouraging. Thank you, Sean. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Holly, we're ready for your word. Bring it on. So um, I actually, well, um, so I'm just getting at my phone because I took notes on my phone. Um, I actually got... Um, who it was for, but then I also got some identifiers as well. Um, so I don't know if I should just go through those really quickly or- Now's your time to shine, go for it. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, um, I felt like um, Martin was highlighted to me. Um, so um, for the month I got June um, and um, some things about you, um, I feel like you like food, like your adventurous food. I'm not sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you saying something? No, I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Just wanted to make sure. I don't want to be like talking over you. Okay. Um, and um, that you like horses. I don't know. I don't know if any of these are landing. If not, that's okay. Um, <laughs> Um, and something, um, another identifier, I guess this is like a, um, a personal, uh, kind of just like a, like a thing about you is, um, that I feel like you're a sensitive person, you're tender hearted and that, um, like I thought of the word heartstrings and I feel like the Lord, like just pulls on your heartstrings and, um, in such a way that he just moves you and it's really beautiful. 
and um, and you might also have a heart necklace, like a necklace with a heart on it. I'm not sure. Um, or maybe that was just a heart strings thing. I don't know. Um, as far as the word goes, um, I, um, I just um, had this image of just like someone dancing and I just um, see so you just dancing before the Lord. Um, but I feel like um, the Lord is just calling you higher, even just kind of like that, that it's even more than you, than you thought um, that, um, like I thought of, um, and just like a, um, just like, like flying through the air, kind of like, just like dancing in the air and just that the Lord just wants to bring you even higher and that, um, to an even greater glory than you were before and that, um, and not to underestimate yourself and that God, um, has more for you. And, um, I also, um, saw a pail and a shovel kind of like what um kids use to make sand castles and um i thought of that kind of tongue twister she sells seashells by the seashore and just kind of um just kind of whimsical kid kind of stuff um but related to the beach and i just feel like um what it means is that um that just kind of that god i'm just encouraging you to like like it's okay to just be silly and to just kind of let it go and to just relax <laughs> and um and, and even just kind of like the way children are just playing on the beach just careless and silly and, and just having fun and I feel like um like the Lord is just encouraging you to just um uh relax and just um have peace um because I feel like um like that um work has been stressful for you and that um and like I think of me like when I was you know like when I was like um, well, I'm, I'm still in school and college now, but back when I was in school, it's like, you know, homework, it's like, you got to do your homework every night. It's kind of like this obligation. Like you always have to do it. And of course work is like that because it's an obligation and you have to do it. But I feel like, um, it's like almost like you're making it too much of an obligation and it's important to, um, to just have like some time for yourself and to just relax and everything too. Um, another thing is that, um, I'm almost done. I just, <laughs> I just got a lot. Um, but I, um, I feel like, um, I thought of the story of, you know, when Jesus is about to be crucified and, um, and so, um, Barabbas, the, the criminal is really the one who, who should have, um, died in his place because he was actually a criminal and everything, whereas Jesus was, innocent. but, um, I thought of how Jesus had this attitude of, um, just, take me instead. And I just heard those words like take me instead. And I feel like, um, like you have that self sacrificial attitude that, um, the Lord looks on and the Lord admires that, um, that you are willing to just be like, take me instead and just, um, and go in other people's place for things that, that you would, um, that you would do that. And, um, anyways, I know that's a lot, <laughs> but, but yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, well, um, I should have been writing it down. I should not trust my memory. But number one, June is my birthday. So that's very significant to me. So thank you. <laughs> and you mentioned the heart. So yes, um, the heart in terms of you said the string, stringing. So that's true that there's certain things I know if I'm doing a lot of work, uh, you were mentioning, and I'm very stern. And it's like, no, this is what has to get done. And I just got off of a project last month. And they're like, oh, you know, you got to cool out. And I'm like, I'm, I am, but we have things to get done. So when that's done, it's like, okay, you know, I can't wait till I can relax or have that vacay and you don't have to stress so much about it. So thank you for definitely not um, being too, as they would say, uptight <laughs> for work and not just mm -hmm. playing it cool. <laughs> cool, that's awesome. Holly, thank you for sharing, Holly. James, one more thing. Like Holly, that, that whole word also like encouraged me like a lot. 
um, I'm wearing literally like a necklace with hearts on it. <laughs> um, I'm also, June, always something miraculous happened, like two years in a row, always something like life-changing happens. Um, and then play versus obligation. I, I've always struggled with that because I like to get things done as well. But then I'm also, when you said beach and sand and everything, I've been writing a kid's TV show. And um, I spent wow. a lot of time doing that um, by the beach. And so for the last two years too. So it's, it was like right on and like, I'm actually picturing it this week again, so. Awesome. Yeah. Praise so, God. Even if it's not for me, I just receive it anyway. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks. All right, Lil Fig, what's up? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure who this is for, but um, I saw like a body of water and then I saw ocean. And then um, I kept hearing, do not fear. And then Holy Spirit reminded me of this scripture that I highlighted earlier today when I was doing my, my Bible plans. <laughs> and so I went back to it and there was a, there was a scripture that had water in it. Um, it had the image of water. And so... The scripture was Isaiah 43, 2. It says, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. I'm not sure who it's for. Um, hopefully someone gets encouraged by this. I find that very encouraging. Yes. Yeah. Like the whole water theme has been happening for quite some time, especially when I was out there. And there were all these things about water running and it being refreshing and replenishing and standing grounded but hearing water like changes your body and refreshes and then like every every conversation had something to do with like water being the theme for healing and cleansing and renewal and change and um and I just feel like it, it was speaking to me every time and as you were talking I was like feeling it again so I'm gonna take that one if that's cool awesome thank you guys <laughs> thank you Tony <laughs> thank you thank you I take it as well. Something personal going on, but water is very significant for me. Ocean is as well. But um, thank you so much. I also I will receive it. Awesome. James, James always says it can or actually apply to more than one person. So that's why I jumped in. Thank you. <laughs> okay. mm. <clears throat> All right. Oh, Shante, did you want to jump in? Yeah, um, I think this is for Maria. Um, when you said, you said the part about leading, leading to, um, and so I saw the word warrior, um, but what I, what I feel like he's got is saying, it says is that with the warrior is more so what he's saying is he's revealing, he's revealing more of who he created you to be in this season. Um, and that he's giving you deeper revel deeper revelation into your identity is also going to be released um and so i feel like he's just saying to keep your eyes keep your eyes fixed on jesus in this season because it's going to be it's going to be really significant for you in this season um for you to really fix your eyes on him and then the scripture proverbs 3 5 through 6 um it came up and i the last part was um that oh with that scripture I felt like with that scripture that it was going to just really help you navigate through this season um and that scripture says um trust in the Lord with all your heart do not lean on your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path so I pray that that is Excellent. We've got TC Martin. You're our last one of the night. Okay. Or of this part of the workshop. How about that? <laughs> I had gotten Tanya. And well, this is a question I should have asked in the beginning, but it just happened. Um, what happens when <laughs> you have your word for Tanya, but then yet because you kept picking on Fig? <laughs> And I'm like, oh, it's Figueroa. <laughs> and then I get something different from Figueroa. So what do you <laughs> then do? <laughs> but I do have for Tanya. I can give her. 
so Tanya, um, what I wrote down was that, oh, I, God has showed me your pants pockets and everything in which you were putting in it financially was falling. Like you couldn't hold on to it. And he was sewing up your pants pocket and that you have been in a financial emergency and that you are looking for God's divine intervention to turn situations around for you. And you have questioned why this was happening because it hurts, not just hurt physically, but it holds you back from accomplishing certain things. And what he gave me was to let you know that this isn't for your demise, but for your development, for who he has designed you to be. That. Wow. Um, well, that's true. And it's true, like, in a way, because I've been having these, like, I've been, so I've been building back up my finances over COVID time. Like, just, I went from, like, a lot to nothing to, like, building it back up again. And so that's been happening, like, in through getting jobs and saving and all that other stuff and getting rid of attachments in past relationships that caused financial strain. And so the cleanup has been really rough, including student loans and all the things. And so I've been paying off like taxes and thinking that it's done. And it just keeps like something keeps coming up every time, like about the taxes or about like um, uh, unemployment insurance, like things that, you know, I'm just like, this is crazy. So while, while the blessings are coming and I'm learning how to, you know, manage with all the new things that are happening, I'm still definitely asking like, Laura, so why does this keep happening? You know what I mean? Every time I feel like I'm like, great, this is great. You know, then I get like some letter in the mail that's like, ah! <laughs> so, um, but it has, it has been, actually felt really positive that it's going to be fine so I have a lot of faith and belief in that so I thank you because I just believe that it's going to work itself out the Lord is going to is taking care of it it's done and I I put the paper down and totally forgot that the scripture that he had given me was Jeremiah 29 and 13 then with a deep longing you will seek me and require me as a vital necessity and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart amen thank you i received that thank you praise god very good well this has been incredible i did have a couple words for people i was tanya you're so highlighted you keep getting highlighted tonight i guess you're on god's mind but this is kind of a weird word i Kept seeing, do you have like some kind of animal skull or something? Were you ever given an animal skull? It's weird. Animal skull. No, not in recent years. Okay. You don't own anything like that. No, I don't. Okay. I used to have a rabbit's foot a long time ago, but I don't have that anymore. A lucky rabbit's foot. <laughs> Years ago. I, all right. Well, there you go. Well, let, I'm not sure what I'm seeing, so I'm just going to drop it. It's all, it's all good. Did anybody else have any words they wanted to kind of share the stuff they were getting that they didn't get to? Is this where I can say about Figueroa? <laughs> yeah, you can drop your bombs. <laughs> Figueroa, I love your last name, actually. Um, and when they were picking on you, <laughs> I was seeing that you love to sing. You're jolly, happy, and excited. And you are definitely the 
fun of the party. <laughs> if you are there, it's like, oh, <laughs> she's going to have a good time. And you know how to pull people together. You can get them to come to do something. And it's like, how is it others can't do that? But God has made you to be a connector so that they can see what you have to show and where because of what you do in him, it will help to guide them by doing better and not just bad stuff. <laughs> Thank you. I think that was very on point. <laughs> yeah, I do love singing. I just hide away <laughs> when I sing. <laughs> But um, yes, I do love people and I love bringing everyone together. Um, and that happened this weekend. So praise God for that. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Praise God. So good, guys. Well, anybody else like to share? Um, I think that I'd like to share um, one last thing for Martin that I did not share earlier. Um, hi again, Martin. Um, so I, um, I was um, just throwing this out there. This doesn't apply to you. That is totally fine. Um, have you been experiencing like sharp pain lately? No. No. Mm -mm. Okay, good. That that's that's a good thing. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> well, cool. Um. Well, Martin, since we're on you, um, are you a kingdom builder? Like, do you work in the marketplace, like business-wise? I do. And I, and I really do feel like he he's saying like he he trusts you with more. Oh Lord! <laughs> like he really trusts you with more. Um, and um. Yeah, just taking that extra step. <laughs> okay. Encouraging you to take that extra step. Yeah. Wow. Someone was asking me to do some additional work and I said, I can't take any more jobs. I can't take that on. Well, I know. So for you to say he's trusting me, I'm like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> Yeah, and he also, like, in your family, is like, your father's side is being highlighted to me, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, but, like, the Lord is on that. And then also, um, he's going to develop a team for you. Well, I receive it. Yeah. Teamwork <laughs> makes things work faster and better. It. so yes <laughs> teamwork is good a good one um yeah. my dad's side definitely uh no i don't know i lost my dad so he's not um alive but i don't know much a large portion of my father's side of the family was he also like in business or was he also like no he was a mechanic Mm -hmm. yeah I'm not sure but you know maybe there's also some healing still to do so there's no healing to do <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't get that word there might be also just some healing that the Lord wants to do you know oh, oh, oh. okay yeah. well definitely amen I do receive that <laughs> okay so good thank you thank you so much and he just keeps saying for you to fly fearlessly. That is what I keep getting for you inside. Fly fearlessly. I received it. Cool. And then I've got Martin, as I'm looking, you and Diana are right next to each other, but I kept seeing the numbers eight, zero, and then I was seeing like five, nine. I don't know if that means anything to either of you. No, can you step a little deeper? <laughs> well, it, it's not meaningful or? I no, know. I I don't see where to apply it. I'm trying to see. I don't know if it's a phone number or a 
social or you type those numbers into your phone contacts, sometimes that'll happen. Things will pop up. Uh, all, all four numbers, 8059? Eight, 8059. Okay. The eight, the five, and the nine are part of my social security number. Oh, uh, um, next to each other? Um. <laughs> Mm, the eight and a five are next to each other, and the nine is fast. Okay, cool. Yeah. Don't share your whole one online, please. No, <laughs> I won't. And then I was born 89, so maybe the eight and a nine. Oh, I see. Okay. 1980, yeah. Still calibrating my numbers. Well, it was, <laughs> I was seeing it mostly on you, but we were talking it to TC, so I thought, well, maybe it will apply. Good go, go, God. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this workshop. It was kind of like a slower pace, breaking it down, doing it together. I hope that you're encouraged. You did really, really well. I was very excited. So this month, we'll just be doing a lot of this practice and going for it. And this is a really good start. Okay. God bless you. Invite your friends. We'll blast them in Jesus' name. <laughs> bless you, James. <laughs> James. Okay, so we'll see you soon. Thank you, James. Good Thanks. night. Have a great night, everyone. Good night, everyone.